Hello, I am Sarah Dreibelbus. I'm the whiskey buyer at La Grand Triage on the Upper East Side. And today we're gonna to be talking about scotch. Um, scotch can feel, I think, kind of intimidating. Uh, it's a little bit of a higher price point than some other whiskeys. It tastes very different than some of the like bourbon and American stuff that we're more used to. Uh, a lot of the bottles have just like way too many letters in the name and we don't know what to do with all those letters. Uh, but a great way to kind of cross that boundary and enter into the beautiful world that is the world of scotch is with blended scotch. So single malt scotch tends to get uh, the kind of big name headline treatment. Uh, single malt just means it's made from 100% malted barley at one distillery in one distilling season. Cool, easy. Uh, blended scotch is a blend. It could be a blend of multiple single malts. Uh, we can also add unmalted grains or whiskeys made from different grains. Um, it just takes the, the single malt rules and like whoop, opens them up just a little bit. Um, and the reason that blended scotch came to be is if we take our time machine doo -doo 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 back, and now we are in the mid 1800s, which weirdly enough looks just like my apartment. Um, but here in the mid 1800s, we're not very good at distilling yet. And our single malts that we're making are really harsh and they have all these compounds that taste like gasoline and fuel and just really bad. Um, so a few new distilling techniques were developed and they let us distill different types of grains, distill things a little bit differently so we get different flavors. So blending scotch actually added more interesting, more mellow, more drinkable flavors to that originally kind of harsh single malt profile, making for a tastier drinking experience. So nowadays, uh, we're back in 2020, I know, I'm sorry. Um, nowadays, we are better at making single malts that taste good. Uh, but blended scotch does still kind of have a similar role to play, just in uh, a different way. Uh, single malts, the distilleries that, that make them, they all kind of have a style that they lean into and they lean into it all the way. So there's so many different flavor profiles that that could be. Um, it could be really, really peaty and intense or really grassy and light or really kind of fruit laden and thick and when you don't really even know which of those flavor profiles you like and which way you want to go it can be a little bit intimidating a lot of those are very like love it or hate it kind of flavor profiles and it can just be like hard to find your your footing um blended scotch can be that really awesome starting point um if every single malt is a cheese a uh, really strong blue cheese over here and like a really light cheddar over here uh think of your blended scotch as a cheese tray and you can try all the different cheeses and the different flavor elements and find which one you really, really like and learn that like you just want to go hard on that Stilton and then go there from there. So my uh, my show and tell friend for today, uh, this is the Isle of Skye 12 Year Whiskey. It is from Ian McLeod. They do a lot of different blended scotches. This one especially is kind of fun because it's actually based on the McLeod clan's um, 19th century blended scotch recipe. So if you want to take that time machine trip like we were talking about earlier and try that kind of original essence of blended scotch, this is a great example. Um, it is primarily, bring it in here, primarily island scotches and uh, space side. So those are two regions. They're kind of on opposite ends of Northern Scotland. Island stuff tends to be very peaty, very smoky, very medicinal. And the Speyside stuff tends to be very kind of fruity and light and sunshiny. Um, so we're already kind of getting a sampler of our different regions. Um, yeah, right off the bat here, there's definitely just that touch of peat. There's a little bit of that smoke, but a little bit of stone fruit, a little bit of grassiness, like this balancing act is already happening beautifully. Uh, another fun fact about this one, uh, the 12 year age statement, kind of weird to see on blended whiskey. It just means that everything in this bottle was at least 12 years old before it entered this bottle. And um, also fun fact, it's believed that much of the island whiskey in this is actually from Talisker. So if you have had enjoy a Talisker 12 year, this guy might be up your alley. Yeah, it, this one is like, if you want to try scotch and you don't know where to start and you have heard of this Pete guy and you don't know what he's doing in your whiskey, um, this is an awesome place to get that sampler. Uh, there's a little bit of smoke. There's a little bit of that kind of tar-like um, burning oak, um, peaty, earthy flavor, but then there's also a lot of brightness, a lot of like 
orange peel, a little bit of grapefruit. Um, there is those grassy barley notes that you're gonna get in a lot of single malts. This is an awesome, super sippable, super easy, super approachable kind of primer on all of the flavor profiles that you can discover within Scotch. Um, if you guys have any questions about other whiskey stuff or you know just life in general uh please let me know if there's other topics you want to learn about uh eric will be back with you on on friday talking about some sort of delicious wine i don't know you know it's gonna be good because it's eric and we trust him uh in the meantime stay home stay safe stay awesome